Okay, only 2,000 uh, 2, hands for us at this point. We're playing here in L200. And our stats are a bit different here. We've got the ABC tag just defaulted from Hold'em. And actually our ratio here, this 19 to 9, uh, is a bit too light. Uh, that one we wanted to tighten up, but I think uh, given the circumstances, I think we're playing a bit looser here um, and checking out uh, more flops just given the table conditions. So let's run around here and see uh, who our opponents were. <laughs> and we'll start here with the whale. Um, 120 hands on the guy. He's played every other hand more or less and only raised 3% of that. Okay, so called whale. Um, relatively passive post flop, 1.7 and a guy, really, really good guy, uh, to have at your table. Okay, anytime you see the whale stats, you know, that's a good place to be, especially if you see multiple ones. Now, we've got over here a fish, typical fish. Uh, he's played 42% all hands and never raised. Okay, uh, We only have 67 hands on him, but that's very indicative of uh, how this guy plays, and we'll see how that works out here shortly. We do have a couple rocks here and here which is never necessarily a good thing, but when they are in the blinds behind you, that's decent because you're going to be taking those, taking those blinds down a lot with your steel raises. So if you do have rocks uh, that are more or less passive to your left, that's not a bad idea, especially when they're in the blinds. You're going to be making a lot of money over time. Um, be careful just when they re-raise, right, when they three-bet to your, to your steel raises. Let's see if we got anybody else who is interesting. This guy here, we've got a guy playing every fifth hand, raising only 7% of that. Super aggressive post flop. Uh, almost 700 hands on the guy. He's only getting to the showdown 19% and winning 58% uh, of the time when he does get to the showdown. Now, his 19% win to showdown is very markedly conditioned by his super aggression. So he's the type of player that's going to be pushing others off of hands post flop. And that's why that's a low number. Um, but again, this guy, he's, you know, pre-flop uh, loose passive, you could say. When he does raise, you need to be careful. Again, don't confuse this 22% total hands played with the total hands that he raises. So he's only raising the 7% range, which is quite tight. Even though he's, in general, calling, overcalling, um, limping much more. Okay, you need to clearly distinguish those, those two numbers. And even though somebody has a really high uh, VPIP, a relatively high VPIP, when they have this small uh, PFR, it's completely independent of the total number of hands that they're playing, especially at sample sizes over 500 hands or more. Um, good, good, good. We've got here a very typical ABC kind of guy, 14% VPIP and 10% PFR. Uh, kind of passive post-flop at 1.7, getting to the showdown 31% of the time and winning 50%. So very typical tag stats. Yeah, and then we'll see then how this hand works out. So the fish then calls, he just limps in with this queen jack in middle position. And we raise him up because we're already seeing his lovely fish stats. And as you see here, the equity matchup is, yeah, 70, 30 more or less with the dominated situation. Right. And we get one cold caller in position on the button. That's never a good thing, but he did call cold. We were hoping just to isolate this guy, you know, the fish. We were we wanted to isolate him because we saw these stats. We're thinking, okay, great, uh, H Jack's gonna be good against his range a lot, and we make that isolation raise. Unfortunately, we get two callers after the fact, um, and luckily it's a fish and this guy who likes to see a lot of flops. Okay, so that's what we're thinking coming into the flop. And pot is now 37, and there's a flop. Okay, so we got a two suited, quite connected board. And we do have top pair tap kicker against a whale, kind of a aggressive station looking kind of guy, uh, at least pre-flop, and a fish. Okay, so top pair top kicker against these cats is going to be decent a lot. Uh, the one thing you do got to be worried about is, you know, you have three players here. That means two pair plus is going to be there, definitely in these guys' ranges at 45%. Um, they could have also been cold calling with sixes and sevens. Um, yeah. Flush draws highly likely, given three players, and you're not having any of those suits. So it's it's a dangerous situation, and it's one you got to play with caution. So let's see how it went down. 
Yeah, check, 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 and we bet it out. And this guy's in getting three to one odds with top pair, queen kicker, and the fish then calls. Yeah, as always. Okay, so that is of course very disturbing for us. This turn card here, which completed then any potential flush draw, it also completed anybody playing 10-8, you know, i.e. fish kind of ranges. And uh, what else? I mean, if you did have the sixes or the sevens were already toast, you know, guys like this also play jack nines, jack uh, jack sevens and sixes, all kinds of stuff. So we're not so certain where we stand with this. This guy, again, only six or seven hands, but showing kind of fishy range is the flush draw completed on the turn. And that's, you know, all this is in the back of our mind when we then make our next decision. So he checks and we check behind. All right, just in case he's going to try and pull a check raise after having made that flush on the turn. And we just have a look at the we have a look at the river card for free. So this move here was in pot control against a fish range and a likely completed a completed flush or two two uh, two pair or potentially even uh, straights at that point and yeah pretty much anything else. So what we want to do is you know when we when we check that turn right we're also making it possible for him to to bluff. So it's kind of a bluff induced kind of move and pot control at the same time. So we check, probably check called, I would assume. Yeah, and call it down with top pair, top kicker against the fish. And he shows us then the queen kick and we take it down. Okay, and on that side, then the rake was four bucks at that side. All right, so now we've got uh, Jackson, as you see here again with equity matchups. Um, Two over cards versus a an under pair is very often this 55-45 split. And let's have a look quickly at the different players on this table. We've got one guy here for 149 hands who is a very typical, very, very, very typical loose, passive, aggressive player. Okay, and he's got the dice here. Again, a gambler. He's looking, he's, you know checking out a lot of flops, barely raising preflop. So when he does raise with 2% preflop, you know that he's, you know, he's probably on kings or, or queens are better. And yeah, you can just get out of the way. He's never stealing. Yet post flop he gets really active. Okay, so he likes to see flops and then he plays them yeah, whenever he's involved. So this time he actually got a hand. <laughs> uh, ace king against our jacks and yeah, we'll see how it works out. We're playing here in L50 it looks like. Okay. Uh, another another gambler here. We got 200 hands on the guy. Uh, again, you see here he's playing every third hand at 32%, only raising every 11 or every 11th hand. Uh, this guy is stealing a bit more than this than this cat, but um, you know very similar stats in general. And yeah, again, both of them got the the gambler icon here from Holdem Manager. Very typical calling station. This is a uh, this 46 yellow. 27% of hands he's playing, only raising 5 pre-flop. And very passive post-flop, you see that 1.1, which is why he's got his little cell phone here, his calling station. Uh, getting this, getting a showdown 24% and winning 45. Okay. Give you guys a couple of examples of how these different stats look in a real playing environment online. And let's see if there's anyone else who's worth looking at. That's more or less it. Okay, so we've got Jax. Raise it up uh, three and a half times. The big blind. And our guy here just calls with Ace King as calling station kind of uh, loose passive players do. Pre flop. And we come into the flop with. Ah, excellent. You can't get better than that. Um, flop set with the King non-suited board, non-connected. So these are one of the situations where you can actually slow play a set in Hold'em. Right, we've got mid-set, non-connected, non-suited, and uh, with two opponents, likelihood of a king out there is, is quite high. And so we... What do we do? How do we play this one? Okay, we only bet half pot as a c-bet right on this board and luckily get raised from this ace king guy. Uh, our other gambler, he checks out and we only call. Okay, slow play. And now we see again here the different equity swings. Um, on the flop, we've got 97 percent 
He's basically got to hit running kings or, or aces. Um, or, for example, king two or something like that. Um, and that's why he has only 3% at this point. The king hits, and he's licking his chops because he's got top set plus the ace kicker. Okay? Heads up, guys, in case you haven't seen the videos on equity and, and poker math, this is a quite common situation where somebody may have flopped a pair of, uh, or a set of twos, set of jacks as we have. He makes top set here on the turn with ace kicker, right? So he thinks, yeah, he's just going to the bank right now. And, of course, his king then made our, our full house. And so now he's got to hit the king or the ace or the two in order to beat us, and that's what his equity looks like at uh, 16%. So, we probably check raise this. Yep. And we get it all, almost all in. Yeah, he bets then for us, and that's coming into the river at 84% with our full house made. And we take it down. But again, um, you know, that ace king you can't necessarily expect from those stats, but uh, that's how it worked out. So we got ace jack here, middle, we're playing here in L100. And, okay, before this goes all the way around, this is actually a very colorful table. So let's take a quick look at the different players we're facing. Again, another gambler, 30%, 29% of all hands, 500 hands we have on him. He's only raising every tenth, and he is stealing 45% himself. 2.3 aggression factor, not so aggressive post-flop, but, you know, again, a guy that likes to see a lot of flops. You can get into it with him uh, and then push him off a lot of hands. And he's folding 69% to see bets, only getting the showdown 20%, and winning at 46% when he does get there. Okay. Uh, we've got here Bobby, and we've got a note on this guy. Let's see. Okay, min raise, min bet crap means a monster. Um, yeah, okay, typical. <laughs> typical note on some guy, guy like this. You know, he's got 70% VPIP. Uh, Pre-flop, he's only raising 3% of all hands, and so he's going to be the kind of guy that's going to be limp-raising. I'm oh, looking at limp-raising here. Um, or just, okay, just limping, limp-calling with his, with his big hands. Uh, rarely raising pre-flop, uh, really passive post-flop, uh, getting to the showdown only 24% of the time, and winning 63% of the time. So this is this kind of I'm so freaking tricky kind of guy. Uh, Nitty, yeah, loose passive kind of guy uh, who, yeah tries to suck you in whatever he does have these monsters so that was uh that was bobby now the typical rock um but this guy is we would say not a good rock but kind of a fish rock so he's only playing 11 percent of hands and only raising one percent so when he does raise it's yeah, essentially kings or aces and post flop he's got a point two aggression factor okay so you're going to push this guy off of every other hand um you know, when he is involved, he's he's got yeah, a huge hand. You got big implied odds against him, um, but basically kind of a rock rockfish example. Okay, we've got here this guy. These look more respectable. What's the note? Uh, limp raise with aces and EP1. Just as a just as a heads up, uh, pretty solid stats from this guy actually. This is a very typical tag: 13% V pip, 7% raise. Uh, only 10% steel raise. Uh, he's a bit passive post flop with 1.5%, but we got 1,800 hands on the guy. So yeah, these these stats are pretty indicative of how he plays. Solid player, uh, maybe a bit too bit too passive post flop, but uh, yeah, one to definitely put on the avoid without position and decent decent holdings list. Here another uh, calling station. 26% of all. Uh, hands he's playing pre-flop, only raising 2%. 1.6 passive player post-flop. Yeah, and that's how that works out. I'm trying to think there's anyone else that we haven't really seen. Another rock here at 6 and 6%. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I think it's pretty indicative of what you're going to be facing here online. Let's see how this works out. we got ace-jack. Raise it up on this table. Queen-jack calls as he's going to do 29% of the time. And we flopped then our um, yeah, nut straight. Okay, not a, not a complete nut straight because, of course, somebody could have flopped the flush. And, of course, as you see here, any club is a big danger. So this guy flopped middle pair, queen, and 
and flush it all with the jack. And not knowing that we hold the ace, uh, the ace jack even, um, he can also assume that he's also on an open in a straight draw. But even the fact that we have the ace uh, and the jack, um, those cards being known, his equity is still on this flop. Even when we have this uh, top straight right here, um, 42% to the river. So it's really, really dangerous. And again, we're against a gambler. He checks it, and we make a really strong bet here to protect against exactly that kind of hand. And he checked men raised. So that's, yeah, that's always indicative of, not always, but almost always indicative of a problem, especially against a, a guy who's relatively passive post flop and playing that kind of range of hands. So I assume we just called it. Yeah. And here's a seven. Now, he then donks the turn, okay, for half pot with the queen here. And we, again, he's relatively small stack. We're worried about that flush draw. And we push over the top. So we get it all in right there, putting him on essentially exactly this hand. And we get it in for 77%. Yeah, basically the ace would split and any flush draw. So uh, any, uh, any club at that point. And he calls it 122 in the pot, no dice, and we take it down. Okay, next hand, let's see here how the board looks. Uh, 10 jack. This is actually a relatively uneventful board. Nothing concerning player profiling that we haven't seen. Again, here, this guy, 61 hands. Um, every fifth he's playing, every only raising 3%. Uh, very passive post flop. I mean, this is just an ideal customer. Right? Loose, passive, passive. Can't get better than that. So I guess, uh, given the situation, and he is our, our opponent, we'll see how we play that one. Um, 28. Okay, here's a guy with quite a few hands. We've got uh, 952 on him. Uh, and this is, okay, very indicative then of an ABC player. Uh, good solid tag. Actually, I really like these stats. Okay. He's um, maybe folding in the big blind a bit too much at 50%, uh, definitely too much in the small blind at 100, but he's playing only 16% of hands, raising half of that, uh, potentially a bit more, and, you know, still raising a bit too high, maybe 33%. Um, uh, we have a similar stat, but, um, you know, depending on table conditions, you can get away with a lot of stuff. So four, uh, four aggression factors very akin to ours here at 4.5, as you see underneath. Uh, he's folding to, a, or he's making a C bet 79% of the time and folding at 72%. And as you see here, I mean, his stats are quite akin to ours. Um, at this point, with 3,200 hands, we were playing 19 and 11 splits uh, for PFR and um, VPIP. Yeah, and yeah, they're actually quite, quite close. But this is, yeah, example of a, of a player who knows what's going down. Um, that, that range, that 2-1 uh, range also at, at our point there, that could be a bit higher. Um, but again, yeah, always take into consideration your table conditions and your players. Yeah, we've got another gambler over here. 28% of all hands he's playing, only raising 7. Steel raising 44%, right? Uh, aggression factor of 3.2 post flop, so he's, he's an aggressive gambler. And only getting the showdown 18% of the time. Uh, probably because of his aggression and funky moves, uh, but when he does get to the showdown, then it's uh, he's winning 71%. So, yeah, this guy's all over the place. And what we want to do now is look at our guy here. We're playing our our knit, uh, knit kind of calling station guy. Very passive post slop, and he that's what he does best and limps in early position <laughs> with the suited ace three. And of course, we don't allow that. We isolate for four and a half or five big blinds. And we wait for the flop. 10.5 in. We both hit top pair. And, of course, that's huge with our king kicker here. And we protect against the potential flush draw. He checks. And we bet it out. Only at half pot. That should have been probably a bit more. He calls. Called. Here comes a turn. And now, so, now every two and every three are also on his uh, list of outs. And, yeah, luckily he's not on the flush draw, otherwise it would have been quite a bit higher. 
and so he then checks again and we then make a very strong bet here at 16% which are at, uh, uh, what three-fourths more or less pot and we should have actually done that on the flop to protect against this flush draw potential and so we go ahead and make that flop or that that bet here in position and he needs 30% equity to call he's only got 16% and yeah as we see what kind of player he is he does call it down with that top pair really weak kicker and luckily we didn't get sucked out on the river and he donks into us and we call him down